the Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law. It helped renew the promise that here in America, we're defined not by our limitations, but by our potential. Visit disability.gov to see how you can help. Brought to you by the American Association of People with Disabilities and the Ad Council. It's the Rusty Humphrey Show on 640 WGST and 640 WGST.com. Yo, 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 welcome back to the show. It is the Rusty Humphrey Show on 640 WGST and 640 WGST.com. Jerry Boyer, our economics expert, he's on the way. Charles, is it Cuck or Kook? It's Kook. It's, he's a Kook. It's, it's Cook. It's pronounced like my last name, except it's spelled differently. Um, but he's in favor of repealing the immigration law, right? He's on Carlos Santana's side, probably. Right, right. Well, yeah, he's, so he's, appealing. he's leading the appeal. So he's a Kook. But yeah, he may cook. be a kook, but he sounds like cook. He had, when I called him, he was yeah. like, "Do you spell your name wrong?" And I'm like, "No, dude, you spell it K U C K. That's not how you spell cook." <laughs> okay, you spell it wrong. All right. Well, we're gonna rip him. In. I mean, we're gonna talk with him uh, coming up in a little bit. Very, very excited to hear his uh, support of Carlos Santana and the repeal of the illegal immigration law. I've got is- Israel calling. Uh, can you guys? Can you take this here, Jake? Really fast. Hold on a second. Hi, hi there. Who's this? Hey, Jill, I'm on the air right now, uh, but let me give you to Jake, my producer, and you guys can make sure everything is cool, and I'll call her in the next break if you would. George Birnbaum is here. George is usually a much more professional program here at 640 WGST. He uh, lives in Atlanta. He's a political consultant. Used to work with uh, um, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. George, welcome back to the Rusty Humphrey Show. How are you doing? Good to be here, Rusty. All right, put put, talk in that microphone. Get that one up there. Now, um, we're going next week to Israel, and it's getting hot. It's getting not temperature wise. We're talking about people running across the border from uh, from the Golan Heights. This is getting scary. Well, I don't think it's anything that wasn't expected to some degree. I think um, what we're seeing throughout the Middle East and North Africa is this uh, this Arab uprising, if you will, and it's really being funneled by uh, fueled by a lot of things. Okay, but, I'm going to stop you right there yeah. because most people in the audience are going. Okay, well, how do I change the dial? Because they're talking Middle East and Israel. I don't care. Why should I care? Let's go back, George. Why? Let's start off with why should I care? We're talking about Middle East and Africa. Why should we care? Well, if you listen to the rhetoric of any of the Muslims, uh, fundamentalist uh, Muslims out there, they call Israel the little Satan and Israel and Israel the little Satan and the United States the big Satan. I mean, they're gunning for Israel because it's the easier target, but eventually they're going to be gunning for the United States. The minute the last Jew is gone from Israel, goodbye, my homeland, that minute uh, they, Israel will be attacked, the Palestinians will be attacked by the other Muslim countries, but then they focus everything on us, they're right? Thir- there are 13 million Jews worldwide. It's easier to first get rid of the Jews and then go, then go after the Christians. Okay, and... But but everything looking at this going, it ain't going to happen. So why should we worry about it? Well, it's happening. It's happening uh, in Libya. It's happening in Tunisia. It's happening in Egypt. You know, everyone talks about these democracy movements, and they're not democracy movements. They're they're fueled, I think, by the economy in terms of all these young people without jobs. But who's really fueling it are the, the fundamentalists, the Islamists, because they see this as a legitimate way to come to power, just like the Bolsheviks did in 1917 to get the Tsars out and have communists take over Russia, just like the Nazis did in 1933 by taking over the Reichstag and eventually taking over the government. There's the Jewish guy bringing Hitler in again, well, right? You know what's but happening? It's, but but it's but it's important is is they're trying to consolidate the power of the Arab world, the Muslim world. So one guy's in control, the caliphate, and then it's all it's that's revelations. Dogs and cats sleeping together. It's over. Pakistan is. A country that has numerous nuclear weapons is very close to becoming a caliphate-run country. We have to be very concerned. All right, wait, so that those are our pals, the the Pakistanis, right? We've been giving them lots of money, so they're our friends. Well, no, uh, you would think. You would think, but they're hiding Osama bin Laden. But they didn't know he was there. Of course not. <laughs> As we both try to not laugh. George Birnbaum here, uh, former chief of staff to uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu today, I saw, said this is not about 1968, this is about, or 1967, this is about 1948. This is about the creation of Israel, Absolutely. not about the, not about some war that happened. Yesterday was a day in the Arab world that's called the Nekba Day, which in Arabic means the Great Catastrophe. Okay. They see 1948, the year that the state of Israel was, uh, was brought into the back into the world after 2,000 years of Jewish exile as a great catastrophe. They are not interested in Israel going back to 1967 borders. They're interested in every Jew leaving Israel, period. And what a lot of people don't understand when we talk about Israel, again, I'm trying to make this so you get it and, and how unfair this is and what's and, and what's really wrong. When uh, After World War I, the Israelis were given, okay, you guys are going to get this big plot of land. That included all of Israel, included Jordan, right? I mean, a lot of it. And then they came back, went, eh, 
we're going to cut that down quite a bit. And then and then it just kind of I mean it's a it's a tiny sliver of what the Jews were promised from the UN guys, right? It's or, a very tiny sliver. In fact, back originally they looked at the maps of where the 12 tribes inhabited the the land of Israel and that was on the west bank of the Jordan and the east bank of the Jordan and where Lebanon is and where Syria is. And that was the original intent to give the Jews back their homeland. What was originally what was uh, eventually given was like you said a very small sliver of that. And that small sliver is now in great danger. Uh, of being attacked from all sides. All right, but a lot of people say, you know what, there's not that many Jews. That place isn't that important. Why don't we just, we got a lot of land in Texas. We'll, we'll build Jew land in Texas, and you guys can go out there and have your own little country, and you'll be happy. Why not? Well, you know, you're going to be in Israel next week, and you're going to be walking around some of the, the ancient ruins of Jerusalem, and, and those are the same ruins that 4,000 years ago Abraham actually looked at with his own eyes. Uh, it's the place where Isaac was taken to be sacrificed by his father. Uh, it's, it's a place that is our historical and ancestral right. Um, and so there's no other place for us. We don't want any other place. The Jews in the Holocaust and for centuries before that said next year in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That is where we always longed to come back to. It wasn't next year in Houston or next year in London. It was next year in Jerusalem. And that's something like uh, after a, a, a toast, right? That's something you say in a, a toast to things. Next year, Jerusalem. I say it all the time. Mm -hmm. At various holidays throughout the year, it is, it is, it is the, the, the most deeply held Jewish desire. It is to return to Jerusalem. Why are Jew Jews so um, apt to go Democrat in the political world? Do you, do you think? Because I look at Democrats, you know, in America being not the best friends of of the Jews. And I think you're seeing a shift. Um, I think Obama, thankfully, was a bit of a wake up call to uh, a lot of the the Jewish voters in America. I think some are feeling some buyer's remorse, quite frankly. I, I think it's a tradition that goes back a couple of decades um, to the notion of live and let live, and for whatever reason. Uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago, the Democrats were perceived as more of a live and left live uh, party, where the Republicans were more as a in your face and control your life kind of party, where, as we all know, the more conservative you are, or libertarian, if you will, mm -hmm. the more live and let live you are. And I think, I think, taking Israel out of the picture for a minute, I think Jews are starting to realize that the Democrat Party is not the best home for them. Is the other thing, and I'm going to get a little religious on you here, by the way, George Birnbaum here on the Rusty Humphrey Show, former chief of staff to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. He's also a uh, international political consultant. Part of it also has to go with, and I've talked to a lot of Jews, they've told me that they feel like Christians are always trying to convert them, and by that, you know, they want to, you know, Jews want to keep their own tradition their own religion and by the constant uh, attempting to convert them that that makes the kind of it's kind of standoffish thing and and not thinking that christians are our best friend is that is there something to that i think that's a misinterpretation of 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 uh christian desire i mean i think that uh, the christian world the evangelical christian world is, are, are some of our closest friends and allies and want nothing more than to see a strong, safe, secure Israel. I wouldn't say some Jewish of. People. I would say they are your best friends they, uh, of Israel. I, I mean, I, in, yeah. in terms of the non-Jewish world, there's yeah. no doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, George Birnbaum here <laughs> on the Rusty Humphrey Show. So what? Okay, uh, I'm going to Israel, and we're bringing Jennifer Perry, the news director here on the Rusty Humphrey Show. She's never been there before. This will be my ninth trip. Um, it's you know, this seems like it's a it's a dangerous time. What's what do you think? Uh, I mean, Jennifer's concerned about her safety. Yeah. I'm not as concerned. Um, but, of course, ain't anybody you talk to, oh, you guys are going to, oh, are you bringing a bulletproof vest? Right. That I, kind of stuff. I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old, and I feel more comfortable going out for a, a coffee at midnight with them in Jerusalem than I would any city in the United States. It is absolutely safe. Um, what we saw happen yesterday was a... A breach of, of a border crossing. It was immediately uh, uh, closed up by the Israeli army. Um, I, I think, in terms of personal safety, there's there's almost no place safer than Israel. Quite but the frankly. Palestinians, those guys were coming. They're coming from the Golan Heights, and they they knew that they were going to get shot going across. They did it on purpose, didn't they? Oh, they, was, they did to to get themselves martyred. It was certainly a provocation. You know, these uh, there's there's a line that I've been hearing lately that I think is very. Uh, uh, interesting and, and, and correct in dealing with in terms of the peace process. And that is, if these are people willing to die to get the Jews out of Israel, why aren't they willing to lie to get the Jews out of Israel? And that goes to the whole this whole peace process. Uh, Hamas, uh, from Gaza, Fatah, they will do whatever they can to get some kind of interim deal and get as much land as they can through a quote-unquote peace process. And once they get that, 
then they'll turn to violence. We see it every single okay, well, you day. You just throw out two names that most people heard of, but not don't really know the difference. Fatah and Hamas. Yeah. Difference between the two. But for the Palestinians, it's like us Democrats and Republicans, right? right. Well, not exactly, except right. if one of those parties was... Uh, but they both have guns and shoot each other. They both have guns, they shoot each other. One happens to shoot at Jews uh, quite wantfully and willfully, um, which is the Hamas uh, organization. Now, the Fatah political party. Which, They'll blow people up. Don't give them well, the they, they, let, they blow some folk they, up. They are the inheritors of the PLO, the Palestinian right. Li- Liberation Organization, which was headed by Yasser Arafat and a terrorist organization as labeled by the international community for many years. They have now renounced terror publicly, uh-huh. but what they teach in their schools and what they teach in their mosques is quite different. They still teach hate of Israel. They still teach uh, terror and destruction. And quite frankly, uh, Netanyahu today in his speech in the Knesset has ha- had it right. Until the world, and especially the United States, says, okay, once the Arabs and the Palestinians are ready to stop teaching hate and violence and a destruction of Israel, then we can talk peace. Until that happens, until at a very basic, not on CNN and not on Fox and not publicly, but internally, when they start teaching peace to their own children, then we can have a chance of a real peace process. I went inside the Dome of the Rock one time, and I was with one of the imams there. And for folks who don't understand how important the Dome of the Rock is, it is a Muslim mosque at this point. But before that... It was what? You well, described it. The, the Dome of the Rock is uh, the top of Mount Moriah, which any uh, Moriah, which is the FRS Americans, Moriah. Right, Moriah, which if any uh, you know, Christian. Not named after Mariah Carey. Christian or Jew or, mm-hmm. or, or Muslim knows the Bible. That is the place where Abraham was commanded to take Isaac and sacrifice him. In fact, the rock that's in the Dome of the Rock is mm-hmm. believed by Jews to be the rock on which Isaac was actually bound. Uh, it later became the site of the first and second temples, where the the Ark of the Covenant was, the Ten Commandments, the Holy of Holies, uh, until uh, 700 years after Jesus Christ walked the earth, the Muslims came uh, and built a mosque on top of that site. So it's the holiest site for Jews. It is one of the holiest sites for Christians. But you can't go because the Muslims decided, well, Muhammad had a dream and he went to heaven from that rock, I guess. In 1967, when the... Israel was created in 1948, but Jerusalem wasn't united until 1967 when the the Israeli army took back the other half of Jerusalem. Since then, there's been no greater freedom of religion throughout the city and, quite frankly, the country. It is the, the, the Muslims who keep freedom of religion from flourishing in the city of Jerusalem. And so the idea of dividing Jerusalem or giving part of it to uh, to the Palestinians is a very dangerous notion, not just from a historical point of view, but from just a, a freedom of religion point of view. But there's a lot of Jews that, that will not go on the Temple Mount um, because they don't really know for sure where the Temple was, and there are certain places you, that Jews can't go. Right. The Holy of Holies, where I mentioned, which is where the the, the, the Ten Commandments was, the Ark of the Covenant, was a place that only once a year on Yom Kippur, the, the, the Day of Atonement, the high priest could go. No other Jew could enter that uh, that area. And since we don't know the exact location, most Jews refrain from walking anywhere on the Temple Mount, lest they walk over the side of the Holy Holies. This mm-hmm. goes back to a, a whole Jewish deep philosophy that the the essence of God never left the Temple Mount. Even though the mm-hmm. Temple isn't there, it still exists where the Holy of Holies was. All right. Well, uh, George, uh, very excited about going to Israel next week. And, and maybe we'll uh, call you out during the program and give us some more uh, tips and ideas and things that we should be doing there. I sure appreciate it. Are you working on anything, by the way, we should know about? I know you're doing stuff around the world. Nothing I can really talk about. Okay. All right. Do you have a website you want people to check you out? That's nope. Nope. I right, just like, coming, Better just like stay hanging private. out with us. All right. I love hanging out with you guys. George Birnbaum is his name, former chief of staff to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Jerry Boyer's coming up in a little bit. And uh, Charles Cook, Cook uh, he is going to, we're going to talk about the uh, Georgian.